station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We're ready for the event. CNN Digital, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Alexandra King of CNN Digital. How do you hear me? I have you loud and clear. How are you doing today? Hi, Facebook. I'm Alexandra King, and I'm currently sitting safely on the ground at our studio here at CNN in New York City. But I am delighted to introduce you to astronaut Peggy Whitson, who's with us live from the International Space Station. Thanks so much for joining us, Peggy. Oh, it's a thrill to join you guys. Um, we have a lot of fun up here, and we want to share some of that. So Facebook, please do start sending in your questions for Peggy. And in the meantime, just in case you need an introduction, you're looking at the official US record holder for most cumulative days in space. That's a record that Peggy broke last week. Today, Monday, is Peggy's 541st day in space. And right now, she's the commander of the International Space Station, something she's now done twice, again, smashing a new record as the first ever woman to do so. Peggy, you're such an inspiration. How does it feel to have spent more time in space than any other American astronaut? Well, it's actually a real huge honor to represent all of NASA because without all the people of the team working together to make this happen, it is impossible for any one person to hold this record. And so it feels very special to represent uh, the, the NASA team that makes spaceflight possible. And so I'm, I'm honored. We've got lots of questions coming in already. If you haven't already submitted yours, type it in the comment, sec comment section below. The question uh, that we have here is from 11-year-old Nehemiah Chavers. What are the education paths I should pursue now if I one day hope to become an astronaut or work in astronomy? Well, that's simple. Any field of math, science, or engineering is an important field to contribute to the space flight and space exploration of any kind. And so I, I would encourage you to pick one of those fields that really drives you, that really stimulates you to do better and to learn more and really go after it and pursue it. And I think you will become uh, anything that you can dream about. I certainly have, and I feel that it's possible for anyone who works hard and puts a lot of effort into it, they can do that. Peggy, tell me, can anything really prepare you for life in zero gravity? What's that actually like? Well, actually, life in zero gravity is hard to simulate. We practice on the ground what we call the day-in-the-life simulations, but it's just practicing some of the tests. It can't prepare you for the fact that all of your tools float. If you don't pay attention to where they are, they're going to float away. If you don't Velcro things down, they're going to float away. And, you know, it's just in incredibly disorienting to be able to uh, work in any orientation. So I can work... Uh, on the ceiling, or I can work on the walls and be equally comfortable in any of those orientations. But it does cost you in the sense that you have to keep track of your tools and all the things around you. So everything has to either be taped down or Velcroed down uh, in order to keep track of it. We've got a question now from Genia Glover. She asks, what do you believe is the single most important advancement we've gained from our time in space to date? Wow, that's a deep question. Single most important advancement. There are just so many to choose from. I, I think probably, um, you know, the, the discoveries made by Hubble Space Telescope are, have been very dramatic, very amazing. Uh, I can't discount some of the discoveries uh, made uh, on Mars. I think that being a future destination, those are important discoveries as well. 
But I actually feel that the International Space Station is a critical stepping stone, and the research that we're doing here is going to help take us to those uh, distant destinations and uh, further explore space. So things like our technology development, where we're working on a closed-loop life support system, trying to get that uh, perfected so that it'll work uh, high fidelity when we go on those long exploration missions and we don't have resupply capability from the Earth. Um, studies looking at all kinds of things. We are looking at uh, bone cells, bone growth, uh, what, it, what requ exercise requirements are necessary to minimize those losses. You know, are there drugs that we can take that would minimize those losses? So there's lots of really interesting research. It's hard for me to pick just one. Um, you know, all of them are fun to do. We're growing cabbage. Uh, now it's called Chinese cabbage. It's, it's more like a lettuce. And even though we're doing scientific research on it, we get to harvest it to eat every once in a while. And that's a lot of fun for us as well. And it's important, again, for those explorations uh, in the future. So, again, I think Station is a, a fantastic stepping stone to get us there. A more personal question now from Tanya Thompson, who asks, do you get to communicate with loved ones? And if so, how often? Well, actually, here in low Earth orbit, while we're going around the planet, uh, 250 miles above the Earth, 17,500 miles an hour, so once, once a, every 90 minutes, we're going around the Earth. And we can actually use uh, an internet protocol phone because we, we use, have the appropriate satellites that can get those bandwidths down and we can talk, call, the, call, uh, call home from here. So we, I talk to my husband uh, pretty much every day. I talk to my uh, parents and my family probably once a week at least. And so, and friends all the time too. So. Communication now is not difficult. I think those future exploration missions where we're not going to have that immediate calm capability because it's going to, we're going to be going such distances that it's going to take minutes, literally up to maybe 20 minutes for a message to get one way to Mars. So it's going to be a dramatic change in, in uh, our ability to communicate in those future missions. Right now, I think we've got it easy by comparison. We're sadly running out of time, but we've got time for one last question, a fun one. Marie Holmes wants to know, what's the first thing you want to eat when you get back to Earth? Well, we, I told you we got to eat lettuce, but that's only a few leaves. We get to eat like a couple of leaves <laughs> each uh, every few weeks or so when we're growing it. So that's uh, the one thing I miss the most is like a really fresh salad with lots of different vegetables on it. Well, I very much hope you get that on your return. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but thank you so much, Peggy. It's been an honor chatting with you, and we wish you the best of luck with the rest of your mission. Well, thank you very much, and please, all of the young people out there who are interested in math and science, uh, please go after it, pursue it. We need more scientists and engineers uh, to go take the next steps. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the CNN digital portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KUSA TV. This is Jamie Berg from KUSA TV. How do you hear me? We have you loud and clear. How do you hear us? All right, so can we begin? Yes, we can. We're ready okay. to go. Awesome. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Um, Mr. Fisher, I know you're a you're Colorado native, so I'm going to start with some questions for you. Um, I mean, what's it like growing up here and now being in space? Well, growing up in Colorado was awesome, obviously. You always know which way west is, and, and uh, you just have so much beauty surrounding you. And then, you know, the Broncos. But... Uh, 
as far as comparing that to here, I don't know that I could compare anything to here. It's It's been such a dramatic difference from anything I've ever experienced that every day, everything has been new and exciting and just incredible. So I'm having the time of my life. It is so much fun. Um, and how – these are kind of for both of you guys. What – what is, I mean, I'm looking at your picture right now, and you're upside down talking to me. So what um, what are kind of everyday tasks like for for both of you guys up there? Okay, she is going to do some Space Ninja maneuvers. Um, it, it, every day we, we have a pretty busy schedule, so we have to work out uh, a couple hours every day. That's to prevent bone and muscle loss, um, as well as some other experiments that we do. Then we spend the rest of the day doing experiments, um, maintenance on the station, upgrading systems, and just doing science. Science is really our focus right now. Uh, we spent a long time building this incredible laboratory in the sky, and now that it's built, uh, we are rocking through the science every day, um, you know, 40, 50, 70 plus hours a week of uh, groundbreaking science. So every day is filled with that. Uh, we did, we also today did some work. Uh, I thought it was so cool. We spent the morning in the airlock uh, putting together stuff to go outside and, and fix um uh, power and control module for some other experiments outside this station uh, on a spacewalk coming up here in a couple weeks. So every day is different. Every day is exciting. And every day you feel like, hey, we might be making a huge discovery today that will affect all of humanity. And that is a uh, incredible honor. And how, um, I know I got a note from your guys about on May 12th, you're, you guys are going to be doing this um, spacewalk. Can you kind of talk a little bit about what what exactly is that kind of in layman terms? Yeah, well, in layman's terms, there's a pallet. It's basically just the platform. We could call it one of our porches outside. And on it, we have several different scientific experiments that are, most of them are looking at Earth, but some look out into space. And uh, we, this is a power module that's going to be attached to that that's going to enable more capability in one of those experiments. And so we're really uh, excited and interested in getting that data uh, on, from those experiments. Awesome. And um, Commander Whitson, I have here that you were, um You've been in space for 541 days today. So what what is that like? I mean, you're breaking records. What what do you miss most about being on Earth? Not too much. <laughs> Clarence, <laughs> my husband. That's about it. My family. <laughs> I I'm really at home up here. I love working up here. It's such a huge privilege and honor to be here. Um, I, it's hard to get too much of this. It's it's not not possible, I don't think, to get too much of it. And so, I'm I'm really thrilled to be here. And so, what what would you tell like all the little girls down here that that want to be you know an astronaut one day to do exactly what you're doing? Well, I think probably the most important thing is for them to find a field in math, science, engineering, technology, something that uh, technical, scientific or technical, and find a field that really, uh, you know, draws them, that makes them enthusiastic about work and gets them excited about that. Being an expert in a scientific field is one of the reasons you get selected as an astronaut. Of course, one of the other important reasons you get selected as an astronaut is because you can get along well with others, because playing well with others is important when you're in a, in a situation where uh, help might be somewhat distant. You have to be able to count on your buddies to um, work with you. So being a good team member is also really good practice for being an astronaut. And I'm, I'm going back to, like, the – just the daily, like, living tasks. I mean, obviously everything is so different for you guys up there. What What's kind of the most extreme thing that you've, you've dealt with that's different than on Earth? You've dealt with that's different than on Earth. Well, you know, the most extreme thing is go in the bathroom. That's really hard. <laughs> but this is pretty cool. So we're in the, in the Japanese module, and – it's got it's got this garage up there, 
So you can actually fly like Superman. Are you ready? This is yep. pretty awesome. Yep. Woo! <laughs> Jack is a lot of fun to have around. It's great to have the enthusiasm of a new guy helping us out, uh, reminding us even more why it's so special <laughs> to be up here every day. But uh, I think, you know, in terms of challenges on board the space station, um, you know, being separated from family and friends is probably the biggest challenge, but it's not one that's that difficult here because we do have the capability to talk with our family and friends on the internet protocol phone, or once a week we get uh, a Skype, basically a Skype session uh, with our, our family. So, you know, even that is not too bad here. And you guys said you, you're, you're pretty much working nonstop. How, um, how often do you sleep? I mean, do you get more tired up there? I guess that's maybe kind of a dumb question, but maybe kind of a dumb question. But no, I don't. I, I don't think so. We we uh, we sleep just like just like on Earth. It's just our job is is kind of like our hobby because it's fun. So it's it's not. It doesn't feel like work. We're we're doing things, but it 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 really feels fun. And you can look out the window. I'm gonna try opening them. It might not see you might not see it well on the camera but trust me it's awesome okay. and actually one comment on the sleeping thing okay. one comment on the sleeping thing is that uh, you know our sleeping bags quote hang on the wall and it probably is going to blow it out I think it's too bright too bright the sun's uh, bouncing off the solar rays out there and so it's too bright but uh, we sleep in a sleeping bag mine hangs on the wall um, you know, Tomas sleeps on the floor, you know, so it's, and so he's kind of like on his side. So everybody, you know, in any orientation, you're sleeping the same as the, the next guy, even though we sleep kind of all around the edges of the module. So it is different in the sense, if you think about it that way, but the sleep itself, you know, we sleep seven, eight hours a night and uh, love it. Um, and Mr. Fisher, I know I'm probably going to get wrapped here pretty soon. Are you, I mean, what would you want to say to everyone back home here in Colorado? Well, uh, I think that you you can't accomplish anything unless you, you remember where you're from because you are where you're from. And, and the foundation that I got in, in, in the school systems there in Colorado, uh, in, in Louisville, and then at Centaurus High School, and then the Air Force Academy, uh, you know, made me who I am. Obviously, my family is all still there. My wife's family is still there. So... Uh, deep connections with with uh, Colorado and the folks of Colorado. So, uh, all I'd like to say is is thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, you know follow my dreams and and get up here. It it's uh, I wouldn't be here without the support of all those folks in that lovely state of Colorado. And you know the Broncos are awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your guys' time today. Very cool. It's great having you on board with us. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you, CNN Digital and KUSA-TV. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.